Hello friends, I'm going to take you through this landscape painting today and you will see every step along the way. I've cut out things like when I was using a dryer to speed up the drying process and uh, the paper towel for dabbing the paint off is also off screen. But aside from that, you will see everything, including color mixing, which I know a lot of you love. I've already laid down the washes for the sky and the water, and now I'm coming back in with a bit of a deeper blue with a bit of a grayish tone to it for the hillside. And then I'll extend that same color out along the horizon line. It gets thinner as we go over to the right side. I use that swatch card up on the right there to test the colors sometimes before I put them down. I don't do that before every single step, but it does help if I want to especially check the intensity and the value of a color before I put it down on the painting. When I did the background, I wasn't too concerned about how the two lines were meeting up with each other. It was a little bit messy right there, if you noticed, and I left it as it was because I knew I would be coming back over with that hill and then extending that out to the side of the painting. I'm using the Windsor & Newton cotton and set here. This is a travel set. It's so compact and convenient. If you're somebody who travels and likes to have watercolors with you, this is a great option. I used to try to keep my watercolors really clean in the pans, but recently gave up on that because it's so much easier to just go in there quickly and mix them all together. Plus they all end up mixed up at the end of the day anyway, as you can see from what I'm doing above the palette. Now I'm laying in some of the little islands that were on this lake. I was using a reference photo from Pinterest that I found that was a really beautiful minimalist photograph and wanted to create that here. I need to dig out my photos from trips along the coasts of both the Pacific Northwest and then over on the Atlantic coast as well, especially along the coastline of Maine. There are so many beautiful, wild, rugged landscapes along there. It's funny because when I go on vacation, I prefer more sandy beaches, but for painting, I love this rugged, the pine forests and the hills and the bluffs. It's just so beautiful for painting. Then I'm going in and I'm going to place some vertical lines for the trees. I want to outline where those are going to be placed. The tallest ones are at the center of the island and then they fan out from there. There's a teeny tiny little one over on the left side there. So cute. So just placing where I want the trunks to be. As I continue painting, you'll see that those basically get covered up but placing them initially gives me an idea of how I want to position the trees and what I want the height to be. I will usually go over my trees quite a few times. I liked them to have a lot of depth and a lot of very small, tiny detail, especially the ones in the foreground. This hill was really interesting. So I wanted to do very, very thin little trees along the top. And I wanted to score the paper just a little bit, but ended up deciding against that. So then I've got a darker line across the top. And you'll see as I work on the painting that I blend that into the rest of the hill. And then eventually bring in a little bit of mist. Right now the hill doesn't have too much definition to it. I'm just darkening it a little bit with a glaze and extending that along the horizon line as well. I really love a lot of contrast, which is interesting with watercolor because it generally takes a few layers. And I usually use a wet on dry technique because of that. Gives me a little bit more intensity. So now I'm mixing up some of the green and I was using the sap green along with some of the brown. And then I'm darkening those little islands there was another one in the photograph, but with artistic license, I took that one out. I wanted to keep the focus on that main island with the trees. And I'm going back in and layering 
over the definition and the shapes that I laid out before for the trees, going in slightly different patterns, just so that you'll get a little bit of those original layers peeking through. Now I'm picking up a little bit more gray. I want to do a bit of a vignetting effect, heavier on the bottom of the painting, and then just a little bit along the top and the corners of the sky. Now I'm coming back in and I'm going to add a little bit of green to the water and start bringing in the shadows from the trees. I'm going to keep these pretty faint. Uh, sometimes I'll do them darker. It just depends on the light that I have going on in the painting that I'm working on. I loved how ethereal these were looking. I'm really happy with how they turned out at the end of the painting. So right now I'm adding a little bit more of the green to those, especially along the bottoms where they're closest, the bottoms of the reflections where they're closest to the island. Because again, I want that to have a little bit more detail. And then I'm coming it with, in with a bit more blue and darkening that hillside. Starting to add a little bit of texture there. Nothing too crazy, but a little bit. And then I wanted to soften the edge of the hillside. So you'll see me come in with white a bit. I actually want to try this with gouache at some point, but I just had this white watercolor on hand for this painting. So you'll see me go back and forth a few times on scattering it out and then dabbing up a little bit of it with that cotton ball. Now I'm mixing up a darker green and I'm actually using a fair amount of blue in this too because I want that cool shadow to come through. I'm using that to deepen some of the detail on the pine trees. This is when they really start to come to life. You can see that they start rounding out a little bit more and taking on a little bit more form. This is always a lot of fun. I use a pretty small brush here, especially so that I can get into the very tops of the trees. This is a size zero brush. It's one of the Princeton snap brushes, which I really love because they do just what they say, which is snap right back into place. You don't have to reform it when it's wet. It just, it holds its shape beautifully. And that is especially good for fine detail like this. Now I'm mixing up some orange and I grabbed a lot. <laughs> I think I had just sprayed my palette here, so it was ready to go. And I wanted to add a little bit of an orangey brown to the two islands, just to create a little contrast and pop uh, with the, it's a complement to the blue that's in so much of the painting. And it's really subtle, but it definitely makes a difference. You can see it, especially in person when you, when you lay that down. It just adds a little bit more life to the painting. And then I extend that along with a little bit more green and uh, that greenish gray into those shadows. I would love to hear from you, by the way. Are you an artist yourself? Or do you watch videos like this for fun or to pick up little tips and tricks? It's always interesting to me to know who's watching and what you would like to get out of these videos. And I can tailor it especially to your requests. I'm softening up the edge of that vignette along the bottom. It was looking a little too sharp, so I wanted to come back in and blend it a bit while still keeping that crystal clear look at the center where the reflection is coming off of that island. I'm so obsessed with that. I keep looking at it as I'm editing this video. So I hope you're enjoying it as well. Then I'm picking up a little bit more blue and knocking back the vibrancy a little bit with that orange and using that to create a little bit more shadow along that horizon line. And then rinsing off the brush and getting a little bit more green and adding a little bit more contrast to the islands. At this stage of the painting, I'm starting to add finer detail and tweak things a little bit. Here I'm adding a little bit more to the shadows from the trees. So you'll see those darken a little bit at the base where they first start to extend away from the island. 
And then I'm carrying that down to the tops of the trees. I'm working in layers, so as a layer dries, I will, you know, go back to it with new color and add more detail. And while that's happening, other layers are drying. So I'll often switch around between different parts of the paintings. And then I'll use a dryer if I want to speed things up a bit more. Now I'm going back in and stippling a bit more of the fog with that white watercolor. That transparency of the white is really nice because you can see the blue from the hill still showing through there. I'm adding a bit more of a dark, deep dark green to the trees here. I can never get too much of that. And I'm just scattering it throughout the trees wherever I think it needs a little bit more. And then mixing up a little bit more of the misty green and going in between the trees, just making sure that if there's any white still peeking through at the base of the trees that I'm getting that covered up. And then I'll remove the washi tape. I will list everything that I'm using here as far as supplies in the description so that you can see those if you are a painter or aspiring painter yourself. I would love to hear from you if you are. My name is Sarah and I hope you had a wonderful time watching the video. Please subscribe if you did, and I hope to see you for a future painting again very soon.